why don't we introduce each other and uh, yes and uh, my name is Leslie Headland. Um, I'm the executive producer of Finding Asshole and Mel's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mel Stevens and uh, I'm co-creator, writer, and director and actor in it. I am Tom DeTrinis. I'm co-creator, actor, producer. producer. Nice. Person. Yeah. Cool. Person. I found it very interesting that you guys um, went on Seed and Spark to get this started. Yeah. Uh, talk about that a little bit and uh, your experience with that. And for young filmmakers out there, give them an idea of, of what it takes to, to make something like this happen. Well, Steven Spark... Do you want the truth? <laughs> yeah. Do you want the truth? <laughs> well, here's the thing. All of the platform, all of the, the crowdfunding platforms are all difficult. But we chose Steven Spark because we were told by a lot of people that it was um, kind of like a new platform that was like really pushing like inclusivity and like female filmmakers and, and sort of not just helping you raise money, but like it's also a platform. So there's, there's um, yeah. potential there. Mm -hmm. uh, but the actual process of doing it is hell. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, well, good. Let's, let's put a warning sign yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. No, it <laughs> is, truly. Uh, the Seed and Sparks actually is run by two women as well, mm -hmm. two female filmmaker, mm -hmm. filmmakers, which I think is one of the draws. One of the other draws was that it had a lower percentage in which they give, uh, which, which they, they take. take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, They take 5% as opposed to the 7 that mm -hmm. many of the others do. And that 2%, when you're talking uh, a couple thousand dollars, means a lot yeah, sure. to us making movies. And then um, the first two we funded on our own with the help of um, some friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, like, uh, those really were just out of our pocket because we believed in it. And nice. then the third one was such a uh, severe undertaking that we had to we had to fund it in some way mm -hmm. um, and even then we were like the skin of our teeth <laughs> we barely like, made it yeah, yeah we barely made it because Seed and Spark also only gives you the money when you hit 80% right so you really have to work hard to get to that point we still haven't fulfilled all of our oh yeah we things. I'm sorry and you know Leslie's the one who pushed us over to hit 80% actually our yes. oh I was yes. oh well I'm glad I could help yeah. I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad I could help yeah, that's great <laughs> How much did making a short film help you with this process and, and getting you prepared for the, you know, episodic world? Well, I, hmm, I think really the thing that helped me the most was actually coming from sketch, because mm. um, it really helps you hone short form in terms of like beginning, middle, end. What are you saying? What's happening? Like, what it like it? I had sort of already. I guess I've always, be coming from comedy, everything I've done is short form. Mm. And short form is so easily, in my opinion, transferred to TV. It's very easily made into sort of episode. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's been easier. I think if it was like, somebody was like, here's a feature, I'd be like, ooh, let me, I need some time. So it just sort of felt like it was kind of all preparing me for that. Very cool. And you guys employed a lot of your friends, yeah. a lot of people in the comedic world. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, you you try to write for them, but they they bring such a different you know base to them because they're they're they they they're used to being off the cuff, being improv. So how much freedom did you give each actor? Were did you make them stick to a script? Did you give them an opportunity to be a little bit more improv, or did you just write for them who they were and and hoped that they would just accept it? <laughs> um. Well, there's a couple people like Christine, who's also a producer and executive producer on the project. Like her, I specifically wrote for. Tom, I specifically write for. Me, I specifically write for. Other characters, I have people sometimes in mind, but it kind of, sometimes it morphs and it becomes more about the story. I don't do a lot, even though I come from an improv and stand-up background, um, there's not a lot of improv on set. It's pretty to the T. I give them room, like we talk about it. There's a lot of, you know, rehearsal and talking about things ahead of time and if like things need to be changed or tweaked. But um, on set, it's more, to me, it's more about casting the person who's gonna make the character like fully bring it to life within the words that are there. Mm -hmm. Move. Oh, what the fuck 
Bourget is bus stop. <laughs> oh, you're a tourist. Oh, wait, we are on holiday. I thought this was some um, some new drum scene. <laughs> so, so what? As as a producer looking at at this series, what did you think? Well, how did you get involved? Let's okay, go <laughs> this is how I got involved. Was that Mel and I have been best friends for fifteen years, and I have been a filmmaker, a working filmmaker now for seven years, eight, eight years, seven or eight years, seven or eight years. And so I'm kind of at the. I kind of got to this point where I felt like. Okay, I've kind of done stuff I'm interested in doing. Like, now I'm interested in like what other people are doing. Like, I, I'm not quite sure I'm that interested in my stories. Like, <laughs> as, much as, as much as I used to be. Like, in my 20s and 30s, I was like, everything I have to say is important. Mm -hmm. And that I, I'm going to get it out there no matter what. Mm -hmm. And um, now, like, starting with, I, I just finished a Netflix series with Natasha Leone and Amy Poehler, where they kind of brought me an idea and they said, like, how you know like we want to make this into an episodic like you know how can how can we do this like let's all collaborate together and so since then i've been looking specifically for writers and directors and creators of content where i feel like they have um an original voice um a, a stable of talent you know like and kind of going like okay how can i push them from uh self-distribution online platforms into more of like you know, uh, a conventional content platform. Like Comedy well, Central. Like or... a Comedy Central or Netflix. Like, I have, even before I became a filmmaker, I was an assistant for a really long time, so it's like a world that I really understand. And so I actually, this is a long-winded way of saying, I really became involved after they had made, you guys had shot Chapter 3. I think that was when I actually kind of came on board as a well, yeah, producer. Yeah, you came, you, you donate. Like, you were like, yeah. you were like around, you were like, this is really cool, I support this. You were like, one, you know, one of my biggest cheerleaders, and then like right around, like right after we shot it, was yeah. when you were like, and that's when I was like, I really feel like this is uh, something. Even before it got into slam dance, I was like, this is something that really should move now from just that short form online platform into a more, you know, I guess for lack of a better term, conventional space, like mm -hmm. a conventional viewing space, more traditional. Yeah, more traditional, I guess. From from an actor's perspective, a little bit you know that you only have a short period of time on screen. You know that you're going to be doing something that, you know, probably for you is exciting. But how did you prepare for that? Was there, was there, was it just kind of going by the cuff and, and, and letting it flow? Did you actually do some preparation to, to kind of get yourself into that space? Uh, for the first, for the first one? When for I was for any of them, yeah. Any of them? Well, it's tricky because mm -hmm. being a producer, of this as well, especially so guerrilla style for right. the first two and part of the third. I felt the least prepared for number two because we had all that French and I just could not get it because I was so focused with her on getting the, the day done. And we, I was like, yeah, yeah, lines, lines. We have to get, the, you know what I'm saying? Like it was mostly just like, I say the words and then I just had to keep going because, and I think that actually helped a little bit yeah. relaxing into it. Is that I didn't have I, I couldn't make everything precious. Mm. Just say the fucking words, <laughs> do the fucking do what she wrote, <laughs> listen to her what she's telling you to do. And I love I love working with Mel because she'll be like, do it like this, and I'll just do it. She'll be like, do it like this, and I know that she wants all these different choices, and she would give me like five or six in a time <laughs> yeah. if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And something that's like kind of great. What's great about him being a producer is uh, there's a lot of prep beforehand where I'm like, this is what I'm looking for from you. Nice. So this is what I want it to be. And we really learned that on chapter three before we went into it, uh -huh. which was like, we sat down and basically did a rehearsal ahead of time. And I would, so, so it was so much easier to craft his performance. Cause I was like, this is what I'm looking for. This is exactly what I want. You're doing it. That's perfect. So then when we were there day of, it was like less of that. Two minutes and 11 seconds. Yes! Oh, that's longer than I thought it would be. <sighs> Imagine my blowjob later. Imagine my blowjob later. Breathing is for bitches. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> and then the French one was, it was, it was difficult. There was a couple of times where like, I was just like, 
Tom, go Focus. practice it. Yes. We were just like, go practice your friends. Because there, there was just no time <laughs> yeah. for me to practice because we yeah. were outside, we were shooting on the streets of LA on a street we shouldn't have been shooting on. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do now? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. No, I don't care. Like they, we, had, we, had, we had to move so fast. Yeah. yeah. And we had only a certain amount. And I was, as a producer, on those days, you're thinking, I was thinking more about my other fellow actors and the time that we're taking away from them because they were working for free than I was about, I gotta, I gotta make sure I'm good. You right. know what I'm saying? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Which is something that I think, like, not, like, which will be great about moving to, like, a bigger platform is something that we're starting to realize when we realized about Chapter 3 we brought into people is, like, it's not helpful for him to be an on-set producer day right. of where right. he's an actor because it's just too much... It's too much to ask of him yeah. to do. How do you balance the directing part of it for you? Yeah. Not to be like a crazy person about it, but I know exactly the way I want it to look. Mm. So I rehearse with myself. No, <laughs> 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 oh, I don't think so. I th also, like, there's a few times where when she's doing it, she's she would say to me, "This is what I'm looking for. Go mm. watch it," and I would have to just be her eyes, or she'd have yes. to trust someone else on set to do that. Well, and having a, uh, this is something I will never, ever, and I made a mistake on my very short film, I'll never, ever, ever, ever do it again, is I will never, ever let someone approve a take of me without me seeing it. Mm. Because I, even if they say you got it, they're fucking lying. They are yeah. lying. They are fucking yeah. lying. And they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, yeah. And they don't know exactly what I'm looking for, so I have to see it. And so I, I'll play with it. You know, I'll, I'll play on my own, because I think stand-up has helped me, like, learn to practice, rehearse with myself. Mm. And then, once I watch it, I also think just doing self tapes as actors has really helped. Oh yeah, because yeah. you're just like constantly just like you're always yourself. you're always an actor and a director. So uh, yeah. that sort of just helped me. It's just actually made it easier because I don't have time to something for me as an actor. The more time you give me, the more I'm gonna, I think, fuck up. Yeah. And if I have no choice. I just have to do it. Yeah. And then I do it, and then I was like, oh, It becomes that's fine. instinctual. Yeah, right? it becomes, yeah. it's easier because sometimes it's just scarier to like push sure. through that. Sure. Uh, what did you like about this process, though? You guys did this guerrilla style. What, what, was it, what, what do you appreciate about being an indie? Now you're basically an indie filmmakers. Hmm. What did I like? I, you know what I, re I really liked uh, realizing I was an indie filmmaker. Nice. Do you know what I mean? Like, I really yeah, liked coming absolutely. into my own and being like, sort of like, at first, you like, did this. You yeah, accomplished. Yeah, like it. I think at first it was like, I, I want this. <laughs> like, this is the shot I'm looking for. And then there would be a lot of like, no, nah, we can't have that. No, no, no. And then it was like, no, this is this is what I want. No, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And like, sort of like coming into my own of that and being able to trust that. And then really also just like having fun with friends has been the best is like finding the people who get what you're trying to do nice. just like it just you fall into like a pocket of fun and then you start understanding why so many big filmmakers now keep using the same actors and the same crews because sure. you're like oh well you you start becoming like connected to each other in the brain and then it becomes faster on set and it becomes more fun on set mm. whereas like there's certain people where we worked with them, and they just kind of clicked in, and we're like, oh, we're going to keep, we, you know, we keep like a log in our brain of all the people that we want to keep using, because sure. we know that they, we won't have to teach, we won't have to try so hard, she won't have to work so hard in getting what she wants, because she just has to be like, yeah, do this, and they'll just do it. Yeah. And I have to say, like, from a, from a, like, you know, someone that's, like, kind of more in a, working in a more commercial world it's like I weirdly with my first film like kind of skipped over the part that they're going through right now where like I went from like having never shot anything to shooting a film with movie stars mm -hmm. in it <laughs> produced by other movie stars like so I was like uh, 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 oh uh, you know there wasn't really that like what you just what Mel just described that step of like wait I do know what I want mm -hmm. I, I want this thing and so what was fun about watching all three chapters the first of which is here but the three all three of them are online but watching what was so fun about watching them was watching um, Mel's voice as a filmmaker and you know by extension their crew Tom included of like there you can see that there isn't that filter of like but this is how you do stuff. Like, like you know, you know what I mean. Like, but, but that's a cool idea, Mel. But like, 
the way it's done is this way, so maybe you should do it this way. You know, like, like just the fact that the first chapter is all in one take. Like, right. to be quite honest, like, if, if I had been an executive producer at that point and she said, I want to do the whole thing in one take, I'd be like, that's a crazy idea. You shouldn't do that. You should have coverage just in case, you know, just, just in case. Yeah. And what's a, the resulting uh, film, the, the chapter one, is breathtaking. And the first time I saw it, I was shocked. I was just absolutely blown away. Um, no, having worked with Melissa as a as an actress many, many times, written her many parts in my plays, but seeing that one, as, as a fellow filmmaker, seeing that one shot take, I was like, I just never would have even dreamt of doing that on right. my first, on my first, like, I guess you've made peen before. Yeah. But like for the, especially for, but it's, it, it totally establishes the world and the voice and the tone sure. of what Finding the Asshole then ends up becoming. It really does. Do it really I mean? does. It really starts, you like the Uber thing just kicks it right through. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that bit so much. Yeah. It's so good. And, and for you and the French thing, uh, for me, the dancing would have been the hard part. The choreography. <laughs> oh, that was the easiest part for me. Because I, I, come from a, I come from a musical theater background and I did I do a lot of dance uh -huh. so like that was the easiest thing for me to do nice. but that was also a, that was I still one of my favorite <laughs> still one of my favorites oh yeah and, and that's what's kind of great about Tom in chapter three also I have him because then you start to and I, I learned this from Leslie living with her and watching her work like uh, when you start to realize people's strengths as artists yeah. and so I realized uh, Tom can sing and dance so I can't, but... Um, <laughs> you did a really good job. I mean, I can come in. I mean, I'll come in. But, like, I made Tom do, like, a dance battle and then, like, have to start singing, like, a cappella, like, right away. And he would hit it every time. You know what I mean? And he was just, like... He was, like, got his core. He was ready. And, and that was really fun. And you could start, like... Right That's when that them. all that money in the training just comes in, and you're like, thank God, I spent all that money. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, Mom, I did it. I did it. Mm -hmm. So as filmmakers and as perfectionists, we, we tend yeah. to look at our work, and we, we see it a thousand times over. We watch mm -hmm. it over and over again, and we go, oh, man, I should have cut there. I should have I should have taken time to do this shot or that shot, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But... I don't want to know that from you. What I want to know is what you think you nailed. <laughs> oh, that's oh, such that's a good question. Interesting, because as you were talking to me, I was like, oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I fucked up. I'll tell you what I fucked up. Um, what I think I nailed, uh, it, well, in chapter one, I think what I nailed um, was, I think the, 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 the push-in and the time that we got to Tom's face, because I, I got a little bit of pushback about, like, how close we're getting, and blah, 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 blah. And I, like, I, in my head, I had just seen it so clearly. And I, and I really think we, we nailed that moment. And, like, and me and Andy, my DP, we really worked on, on the movement of that so, so that the reveal was so, like, uh, poignant, because that was, like, the climax of the piece. Right. And I, and I really think the, the music, the composed music mm, really pushes yeah. the piece because all of them have a sense of movement, uh, in some way. And that, that music and the movement of the camera makes it just like builds attention in a way that I really think we got. Nice. Always lying to me. Honestly, I have literally never believed one thing that she has said. Hey, do you have a dressing room? Through the back. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just... My tea. Yikes. <laughs> Well, you can take your break now. All right. So how does one recognize themselves to be an asshole? <laughs> and what mm. should they do once they discover that? <laughs> Great question. That is a fantastic question. How does one recognize you're an asshole? Unfortunately, everyone's one. Yeah. So you don't yeah. even have to recognize it. <laughs> I've done it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Go see <laughs> this. <Yeah. laughs> you're an asshole. And once you realize you're an asshole, whew, take the weight off. Mm -hmm. We all are. Mm -hmm. And then be better. Mm.
finding the asshole. Finding the asshole. Finding the asshole. Finding the asshole. Finding the asshole.